ಆತ್ಮೀಯ ಬಂಧುಗಳೇ ಅಖಿಲ ಭಾರತ ವಕೀಲರ ಒಕ್ಕೂಟ ಐಲು ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಸಮಿತಿ ಪ್ರಸ್ತುತಪಡಿಸುತ್ತಿರುವ ಅಂತರ್ಜಾಲ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸ ತರಬೇತಿ ಕಾರ್ಯಾಗಾರ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಎ ಪಿ ಪಿ ಮತ್ತು ಮುನ್ಸಿಪ್ ಪರೀಕ್ಷೆಯನ್ನು ತೆಗೆದುಕೊಂಡಿರತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಎಲ್ಲ ಈ ವಕೀಲ ಬಂಧುಗಳಿಗೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಕೋವಿಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಪ್ಯಾಂಡಮಿಕ್ನ ಭಾಗವಾಗಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ವಕೀಲರು ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಾದ್ಯಂತ ಮತ್ತು ವಿಶೇಷವಾಗಿ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ರಾಜ್ಯದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಏನು ಕೆಲಸವಿಲ್ಲದೆ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಲಯದ ಕಲಾಪಗಳಿಲ್ಲದೆ ಖಾಲಿ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಒಂದು ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಅಖಿಲ ಭಾರತ ವಕೀಲರ ಒಕ್ಕೂಟ ಈ ಒಂದು ಸುಸಂದರ್ಭವನ್ನು ಆ ಎಲ್ಲ ವಕೀಲ ಸಮುದಾಯಕ್ಕೆ ನಾವು ಒಂದು ಸಂದೇಶವನ್ನು ಕಳಿಸಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಈ ಸಮಯವನ್ನು ಸದುಪಯೋಗ ಪಡಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನುವ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸವನ್ನು ನೀಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಅಂತರ್ಜಾಲ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸ ತರಬೇತಿ ಕಾರ್ಯಾಗಾರದ ಒಂದು ವೇದಿಕೆಯನ್ನು ಸಿದ್ಧಪಡಿಸಿಕೊಂಡು ಆ ಮೂಲಕ ಯುವ ವಕೀಲರಿಗೆ ಪರೀಕ್ಷಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗೆ ಹಾಗೂ ರಾಜ್ಯದ ಎಲ್ಲ ವಕೀಲ ಮಿತ್ರರಿಗೆ ಕಾನೂನಿನ ಅರಿವನ್ನು ಮೂಡಿಸುವಂಥದ್ದು ಜ್ಞಾನವನ್ನು ಹೆಚ್ಚಿಸುವಂಥ ನಿಟ್ಟಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಒಂದು ವೇದಿಕೆಯ ಮೂಲಕ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸಗಳನ್ನು ಸಂಘಟಿಸ್ತಾ ಬಂದಿದ್ದಾವೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ವೇದಿಕೆಯಿಂದ ಕಳೆದ ಮೇ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತಾರನೇ ತಾರೀಕಿನಿಂದ ಪ್ರಾರಂಭವಾದಂಥ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸಗಳ ಕುರಿತು ಈಗಾಗಲೇ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ರಾಜ್ಯದ ಉಚ್ಚ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಲಯದ ಗೌರವಾನ್ವಿತ ಮುಖ್ಯ ನ್ಯಾಯಮೂರ್ತಿಗಳಿಂದ ಹಿಡಿದು ಎಲ್ಲ ಗೌರವಾನ್ವಿತ ನ್ಯಾಯಮೂರ್ತಿಗಳು ಹಾಗೂ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆಯ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಜಿಲ್ಲಾ ವಸತ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಲಯದ ಗೌರವಾನ್ವಿತ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಧೀಶರು ಹಾಗೂ ಎಲ್ಲ ಹೆಚ್ಚುವರಿ ಜಿಲ್ಲಾ ಸತ್ರ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಧೀಶರು ಹಾಗೂ ಕಿರಿಯ ಮತ್ತು ಹಿರಿಯ ಶ್ರೇಣಿಯ ಎಲ್ಲ ಗೌರವಾನ್ವಿತ ನ್ಯಾಯಾಧೀಶರುಗಳು ಅಲ್ಲದೇ ಈ ಒಂದು ವೇದಿಕೆಯ ವೇದಿಕೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಪರಿಣಿತ ಹಿರಿಯ ವಕೀಲರುಗಳು ಹಾಗೂ ಪರಿಣಿತ ತಜ್ಞರುಗಳು ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ವಿಷಯಗಳಿಗೆ ಸಂಬಂಧಪಟ್ಟಂತೆ ತಮ್ಮ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸವನ್ನು ತಮ್ಮ ಅನುಭವದ ಅಮೃತವನ್ನು ಈ ಒಂದು ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸ ವೇದಿಕೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಿರಂತರವಾಗಿ ನೂರು ದಿನ ನೂರ ಎರಡು ದಿನಗಳ ಕಾಲ ನೀಡ್ತಾ ಬಂದಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಗೌರವಾನ್ವಿತರ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸದ ಒಂದು ಧ್ವನಿಯ ಸುರುಳಿಯನ್ನು ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಭಾವ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗನ್ನು ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಐಲು ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಅನ್ನುವ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಚಾನಲನ್ನು ಪ್ರಾರಂಭ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಆ ಐಲು ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಚಾನಲ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಿರಂತರವಾಗಿ ನಡೆದಂಥ ನೂರ ಎರಡು ದಿನಗಳ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಚಿತ್ರೀಕರಣಗಳನ್ನು ಈ ಒಂದು ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಅಪ್ಲೋಡ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ವಿಷಯಗಳಿಗೆ ಸಂಬಂಧಪಟ್ಟಂಥ ಎಲ್ಲ ವಿಡಿಯೋಗಳು ಈ ಒಂದು ಐಲು ಯೂ ಐಲು ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಲಭ್ಯವಿದ್ದು ತಾವು ಅದನ್ನು ವೀಕ್ಷಿಸಿ ಅದರಿಂದ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಜ್ಞಾನವನ್ನು ಪಡೆದುಕೊಳ್ಳಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದಿರತಕ್ಕಂಥ ವಿಡಿಯೋಗಳು ನಿಮಗೆ ಲೈಕ್ ಆದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ಅದು ಮನಮಟ್ಟುವ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ಅದು ಸಂತತಿಯನ್ನು ನೀಡಿದಲ್ಲಿ ತಾವು ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಈ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬನ್ನು ಲೈಕ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಶೇರ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಹಾಗೇ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಆಗಿ ಇನ್ನೂ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನ ವಿಷಯಗಳನ್ನ ತಾವು ಪಡೆದುಕೊಳ್ಳಕ್ಕೆ ಈ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬನ್ನು ಫಾಲೋ ಮಾಡಿ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಸೊ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಅಮೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಮೋರ್ ದನ್ ಒನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಬಟ್ ಇಫೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಟೂ ಒನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ಆರ್ ಇಫೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಎನ್ಫೋರ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಇಯರ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಟು ಅಮೆರಿಕಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಟು ಆಸ್ಟ್ರೇಲಿಯಾ ಅವರ ಅಮೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಿಟ್ಲ್ ಬಿಟ್ ಈಸಿ ನಾ ಆಸ್ ಫರ್ ಎಸ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಅ ತ್ರೀ ಫೇಜಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೇಜಸ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಅ ತ್ರೀ ಫೇಜಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಒನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಒನ್ ಪೇರಿಯರ್
constitution and a procedure thereafter two words are used 368 two words are used in a 368 what are the two words are used the power of a parliament to amend the power word is used and second procedure when it was originally there only the procedure to amend the constitution only procedure was there power was word was not there the word power was added into this constitution by 24th amendment 24th amendment keep in mind so the word power to the 368 was added by the 24th amendment earlier it was not there earlier it was only simply it was talking about a procedure to amend the indian constitution what are the point so next there are two methods to amend the indian constitution one there are <coughs> certain articles has to be amended with the absolute majority and some articles are amended with absolute majority and the more than 50% ratified by the government okay so which article needs to be ratification by the government they have given in the list i don't want to go into those list okay it takes a time so two methods one with absolute majority and second absolute majority with the ratification two methods are discussed in a 368 cross one and a cross two okay one more thing if you read it clause 368 clause 2 clause 2 a lot of persons don't get confused conditions to amend the constitution so bill has to be introduced in the parliament and that bill has to be passed with the absolute majority first condition with the passed absolute majority of a total house of a total house so the total strength of the parliament is a 545 total strength of the parliament is 545 so half of the 545 is a 273 so the first requirement first requirement to amend the indian constitution is that at minimum 273 people must support it if the support of that resolution is less than 273 matter is over matter is over okay so absolute majority of each house absolute majority of each house so in uh, rajya sabha 250 okay so this is the first condition first condition there is second condition there is second condition what is second condition after getting absolute majority then a two third member must support that resolution on the day of a voting on the day of a voting take a simple example take a simple example 545 is the total strength first condition 273 must support the re resolution bill then thereafter second condition on the day of a voting whatever members are present out of those total members two third must support it two third must support it then only resolution is passed otherwise resolution is not passed i'll give a simple example 545 on the day of a voting 300 persons and 280 people have supported it 20 opposed it so 280 is more than 273 first condition is fulfilled first condition is fulfilled second condition what on the day of voting how many members are present 300 members are present how many supported it 280 supported it so 280 is more than 2/3 of a 300 2/3 of a 300 so both conditions are fulfilled amendment is a passed amendment is a passed take another example 525 people were present on the day of voting 525 people were present on the day of voting okay and 340 people have supported it 340 people have supported it now the question is that whether the amendment is a pass take example 340 definitely is more than 273 basic condition first condition is fulfilled now the second condition 525 525 2/3 how much 525 2/3 350 350 now how many have supported it here 340 supported it so 10 members are less than 2/3 so that amendment fails Is it clear? I think I think I have made it more clear. Okay, so this is the condition. Lot of persons are under the confusion that simple simple majority is required. No, so first absolute majority for total strength. Second condition: two third members of the present and voting on that day. Okay, this is condition. Now the question is that already I told you the power word was not there in a 368 originally. It was added by 24th Amendment. Keep in mind. so the first question first question in a, in 1950 itself the question came the question came because of article 31a and b was added to the indian constitution and article 31a and b talks about the property rights okay in the 1950 itself the matter was went to the supreme court what is the power of the parliament to amend the constitution because 368 started with the word procedure 
so the contention of the petitioner is that 368 only contains the procedure it doesn't contains the limitations it doesn't contains the substantive procedures to substantive law okay but in that that is the case that is the case shankri prasad versus union of india shankri prasad versus union of india and that is a year 1951 supreme court 455 and i think at this point of a time i would like to bring one more article article 13 article 13 article 13 has a two clause one and a two clause article 13 says that any law any law passed by the parliament if it is inconsistent with the third chapter of the indian constitution then that law is void that law is void okay so now the question is that the amendment made by the parliament under 368 is it a law under article 30 that was the crucial question decided in the shankri prasad case because if you bring the amendment to the constitution under 368 in the 13th article the matter would be different matter would be different matter would be different so try to get connection between article 13 and 368 because article 13 is a limitations on the power of the parliament to make a law anything inconsistent to the third chapter of the indian constitution okay so in a shankri prasad case what the petition argued that 368 amending the constitution is also law because if you look into the definition of a law under article 13 it has been defined very wide very widely it says that any rules regulation notification circular custom it has been used very wide but they have not used the word amendment to the constitution article 13 does not contain the word amending to the constitution is not there in article 13 even though it has been used in a very very wide sense okay now in this shankri prasad case the petition argued that 368 comes under article 13 so they cannot they cannot amend the uh, amend respects our fundamental rights but the supreme court this was a case decided by the five judges case decided by the five judges and the judgment was unanimous judgment was unanimous and all judges held that the power to amend the constitution under 368 do not come under article 13 amending the constitution is a sovereign power and it is a constitutional power it do not come under article 13 okay so article 13 is a different 368 is a different so 368 is exceptions to 13 so harmonious interpretation harmonious interpretation if you bring a 368 under 13 then it becomes a very rigid it becomes a very rigid so that is why the judiciary thought that better to keep 13 and a 368 separate 368 is a constitutional amending power it is a sovereign power okay so it is not dealing with the statutory power it is not dealing with ordinary legislation so 368 is exceptions to 13 okay so they says that the parliament has a power to amend the constitution first issue is settled 368 and 13 are not interconnected they are independent they are independent and 368 is exceptions to 13 second second important what is the limitation what is it starts with the word procedure if i comply with those two procedure can i amend everything in the constitution because nothing has been said in the constitution nothing has been said in the constitution of a power what is my what is the power of a parliament samvidhan the you know parliament in the itimiti gulu you know ah 368 on balasukondru balasukondu yen bekadanna madabodha samvidhan dalli mahatra badalavane madabeka anu prashne baruthe aa time dalli supreme court dalli en helthare yes 368 includes a power also even though they use the word procedure that procedure includes a power also that the supreme court the interpretation martha yes the parliament has all the power to amend the constitution and the parliament can amend anything so there is no limitation there is no limitation the power to amend the constitution is unlimited absolute so new ella kaltirbeku austin theory austin theory kaltidira austin theory helthana austin says that the parliament is a sovereign sovereign is absolute unlimited his powers are undefined he can do anything so our concept of the supreme court will apply madkotare austin theory apply madkotare apply madkondo so parliament ge absolute power kodtare unconditional power kodtare yen bekadu madkobodu adralli yade iti miti illa so two things are settled two things are settled parliament has absolute power to amend the constitution so 368 contains the power also second thing 13 and 368 are different so this was settled in 1950 so in decision was unanimous then from there we came to important another important case comes because sajjan singh case 
and that was decided in 1965. Again, it was decided by five judges bench. Again, the same thing, and ninth schedule of the hour, yellow little ninth schedule of the go through. Nimgala go through book, ninth schedule by important. Shankri Prasad, the ninth schedule bantu, Sajan, the ninth schedule bantu, Gola, Gola Knath, the ninth schedule bantu, even Keshan Bartha, the ninth schedule bantu. Okay. Again, Sajan Singh case, the Limat, the ninth schedule birthday, some amendments were made, some legislation was put into ninth schedule, and ninth schedule was beyond the reach of a judiciary beyond the reach of a judicial review. So again, it was challenged. What is the power of the parliament? But this time, the cracks appeared in the judiciary. Cracks appeared in the judiciary. Such and single five judges, five judges unanimous judgment. Five judges. But Shankri, I mean, sorry, Shankar Prasad Ali, five unanimous judges judgment. Shankri Prasad Ali, judgment went in favor of a government. But this time, it was a three is to two. It was three is to two. Here the month is just dissenting opinion. That is the first uh, dissenting uh, I mean, uh, among the judiciary. That judiciary is not ready to buy the statement that the parliament has absolute power to amend the constitution. Majority parliamentary absolute power there. Such a Shankri Prasad case and upheld Martha, yes, I admit it. But two judges, dissenting judges, I think one is Justice Mudurkar, another is Judges Hidayatilla, minority judgments. Justice Mudurkar, very important dissenting judgment delivered by him. Either lay, Keshon and the Bharti case, the basic structure theory bandi the Gotanim, basic structure theory bandi the Keshon and the Bharti. But the first time Keshwan and Dali Bandit, the first event of Maridu, Justice Mudolkar in a uh, Shankri Prasad case, Sajjan Singh case, Sajjan Singh case. First time, this end the judgment of Hirthana, Justice Hirthara, illa parliamenting absolute power, and the, the opinion expression of Hirthara. Hidayat also expressed some limitation. There has to be some limitations in the power of parliament. Again, the same thing with the majority judgment uh, concurred, uh, approved the uh, Shankri Prasad case. Parliament has a power, absolute power, no limitation. And that procedure includes the power also. And Article 13 and 368 are separate. And the uh, Sajjan Singh will hear that. Okay, again, confirmed. They approved the, confirmed the, reaffirmed the Shankri Prasad case. But the important the two judgments delivered by the dissenting judges. Two judgments delivered by the dissenting judges. One was Hidayatullah. Another one, Justice Mudolkar. Mudolkar concept of a basic structure is in it. Adu, Justice Mudolkar yelli bandhuratandra. Already the um, Pakistan dalli one Supreme Court daoru one case nalla or head bitter The Parliament doesn't have the power. Basically, it has come from the Pakistan. That concept of a basic structure. Concept of a basic structure. Okay. Then 1965 dalli is uh, Shankri Prasad case agatya. Then Golaknath Barthan. Golaknath bandhidu 67 Barthan. Yerde varsh farko. Again, the matter is resurfaced. Again, the matter is resurfaced before the Supreme Court. Golaknath is from Punjab. He has around 500 to 600 acre land. acre land. The Punjab government passed a legislation. Legislation passed Martara. A legislation that on the Aidnur Arnur Ekre, on Gaiwa Ekre, Ekre, government the acquisition Markotare. A legislation, a legislation, ninth should have hacked with Tara. New challenge, my like Barala. Think I give up the Golakna Supreme Court to Karatatana, Kadatatin and Katatane, Parliament the power in there. Kadatatana again, two years, two years, E time the late, in non Vishari Miharva Kantana, E time the late. Any idea? What are the what I mean, judges of the Golakna case, judges of the Golakna case, bench of the Golakna case, Hanon the Mandi judges, eleven judges. This is interesting, a little bit interesting. See, this is very interesting. Shang this Golaknath case. 11 judges was constituted. 11 judges, 11 judges. Arthartaila, Hanun Mandi Adik Bekaitanta. Akandra, the Sankri Prasad Sajin Singh case, Aid Mandidru. Other than new Rio Marbekaita, your one Sakakti, your judges, judges, bench Sakakti, maximum nine judges bench Sakakti, to Hanun Mandi Akanta, Praste. You don't Praste Uttar Kusal Kastana. Unknown Mandi the Kanta. You know the logic new Madir and Tandra. Akandra is the amendment of the parliament amend Barsala Supreme Court Burgunda. At that point of a time, Chief Justice of India was a Subbara, Justice Subbara. 
from Andhra Pradesh. Very bold, very historical, courageous judge. They were produced in the history of India. Super Rao, they were aware. And he got put to some court case on the Tala. He was a champion of a civil court, civil liberty. He was a champion of a civil liberties. Always tries to protect the uh, rights of the citizens. He put to some court case of privacy and the money money bantu. Super Rao, 1960, just Super Rao was read in 1964. Article 21 includes right to privacy. Minor, that was a minority judgment. Okay, fine. So he constituted 11 judges bench. He constituted 11 judges bench. And only the rationale behind that, he wanted to decide this question once for all. One day, one the logic new here go kantha. This is the Supreme Court birth. This is the bedway All one day, one day, sir, decisions are made. One day, hundred many judges. He constituted 11 judges bench. And this time, the matter went in another direction. Matter went in another direction. Till that point of a time, Parliament enjoyed all the protection of a judiciary. But this time, he said that this time. The Golaknath case, the majority and the minority judgment of the difference was very, very thin. Seven is to uh, six is to five. Six is to five. Only one difference. Only one difference. Six judges said that. Three, six judges said that. Big blow to the parliament saying that Article 360 is nothing but a law and comes under the Article 13. That was a very, very, very significant interpretation. Significant interpretation. What it says that amendment to the constitution under Article 368 is nothing but a law. So the first important breakthrough came in the Golaknath case. Golaknath case restricted the parliament. The Austin theory was rejected. Austin theory was rejected. The parliament doesn't have un unqualified limitation. So the amendment to the constitution under 368 is nothing but a law. It comes under Article 13. So what is the impact? What is the impact? The impact is that the amendment of the constitution is now comes under article 13. It means that they cannot amend the third chapter of the Indian constitution. If they amend the third chapter of the Indian constitution, then that is a void according to article 13. So that this was the, this was the judgment. And one more thing I would like to tell you at this case, the petitioner was argued by the Nambiar, Nambiar, MK Nambiar. And you know who is MK Nambiar? MK Nambiar is nothing but is a Attorney General of India, KK Venugopal. Nambiar was the pleader, was the petitioner in case of a Golaknath case, and he is the father of the present Attorney General KK Venugopal. And very fortunate that both persons, I think, got the law graduate from the RL Law College, Belagam. Okay, so this is the background. This is the background. Okay, so AK Nambiar argued the case. And the AKN Ambera argued the cases on the basis of the Justice Madhulkar basic structure, but Justice Subara was not ready to accept that basic structure concept because the Subara was much more focused only on the third chapter of the Indian constitution. He said that, so civil liberties are more important. So he said that the parliament cannot amend the third chapter and the power to amend the constitution. In earlier cases, it was held within the 368, but in this case, Subara, Justice Subara held that Amend the constitution lies article 248 read with the 97th matter of a union list. So he says that uh, amend the parliament, it is not in the in 368, lies in a 248, article 248, read with the 97 of a union list. So the power lies outside the 368. So too significant. So judgment gave first blow to the uh, parliament. You cannot amend the basic, I mean, um, uh, third chapter. You can touch other chapters. You can touch other articles. This is also, this judgment is also not a reasonable judgment and not a fair judgment. Why? Do you think only third chapter is the most important for the Indian constitution? Not others. What is the power of a Supreme Court? What is jurisdiction of a Supreme Court is not there in the third chapter. It is outside of there. What is the high court? Appointment of a judges? Jurisdiction of our high courts? What is where it is there? It is not in the third chapter. Don't you think Supreme Court, high courts are most important for the Indian judiciary? Don't you think parliament is also most important for the Indian, I mean, from the point of Indian democracy? So all those things are very important. Democracy is important. Supreme Court is important. High Court is important. Amendment of judges, free, fair elections are important. Okay. Parliamentary system, elections to the MLA, MPs, these are all important. But the Golaknath case thought that only third chapter is important. Don't touch the third chapter. You can touch any other things. So if the parliament decides to abolish the parliamentary system, and if it decides to have dictatorship, then it is valid according to Golaknath case. That is also wrong judgment. It is one one-sided judgment. 
only focus on prejudice judgment only focus on third third chapter and not focusing on the other important basic important point of the constitutions so that was the wrong judgment not right judgment not right judgment i can tell you so now we have reached the second stage second stage now the parliament has a limitation to amend the constitution they cannot touch the third chapter they can touch the other things so this is second era this is second era and judgment was 5625 then then thereafter 24th amendment was added thereafter 24th amendment was added and 24th amendment now it start with the power to parliament the power to parliament so this word power to parliament came after golaknath case then if you look into the third 368 third clause sub clause sub clause says what is the, the third clause nothing in the article 13 applies to this 368 so 368 sub clause 3 was added to the indian constitution after golaknath case they specifically excludes they says that article 13 is not applicable to 368 368 so 368 third sub clause was added after golaknath case after golaknath case so then then again 1975 says 65 then the golaknath case was delivered in 1971 again within two years within two years 1973 case one of the party case case one of the party case with just within two years Keshwana the Bharti case. And you know Keshwana the Bharti case? You are all very historical case. I need not cite the citations. Keshwana the Bharti case, very important. It comes, it comes from Kerala, Kerala. He is a Matadisha, Matadisha, Mataya, Matadisha, Hedrithana, Kasargo district, Matkanu district, Nali, Bharat, Kerala, Dali, North, Kar, North Kerala, Kerala. And he is having a lot of agriculture land. He has given all those things to the farmers to cultivate it. And he was getting some, Matadisha was getting some royalty from the farmers. And out of that income, he was maintaining a school, schools, hospital, and all those things. What the Kerala government, the legislation, passed the legislation. Under that legislation, all these agriculture land of Mata was acquired. And that legislation was put into ninth schedule. Matta Ombatne schedule. Matta Ombatne schedule. Then again, this Keshwan and the Bharti knocked on the door of the Supreme Court. What is the 24th on the amendment? Martin? And the uh, 24th amendment, the power words add Martin, add Martin 368 again. And sub clause 2 on the add Martin, it specifically says that the parliament has the power to repeal. More word use Martin, second clause Dali, more word use Martin. So the parliament, sub clause 1 Dali, the parliament can add. Variation, repeal any provision of the constitution. More word add Martha, more word add Martha, 24th Amendment. Prakaram. When the power word is Martha, Munda than sub clause one, Odrinu, Algotagate, you read the sub clause one, three words are added. What are the three words added? So, by way of a, the power to amend, by way of a addition, variation, or repeal any provision of the constitution, any provision of the constitution, and the more word add Martha. So, 24th Amendment. So, Kishan and the Bharti is in a challenge Martha, the Supreme Court Munda. He challenges all these things in the Supreme Court. What is the power again? The power, Parliament to amend the Constitution. This time, Sikri, Justice Sikri was the Chief Justice of India, and this time again they they decided to revisit the Golaknath case. They revisit the Golaknath case, and Golaknath case was decided by eleven judges. So then the larger bench should revisit the Golaknath case. Then it was constituted thirteen judges, thirteen judges, the highest. They just ever decide the single history, single case in the history of Indian judiciary. So far, so far, 13 judges. So at time that again, I'm telling you the strength of the Supreme Court was hardly 15, 15 or 17 years, 15 years, the most probably. So entire full judgment was entire Supreme Court, full court heard the matter. And this time the Keshwan the Bharti was represented by none other than the Palikiwala. And the government side and Kerala side, it was argued by the two another stalwart Shirwai, who has written the famous constitution book. So stalwarts were there, 13 judges bench. And the argument went on 66 to 67 days. Argument went on, argument went on, uninterrupted, uninterrupted, 67 days. The Supreme Court did not hear any other case, any other cases. Just a marathon argument, marathon argument. And Nani Palki, well, I'll tell you, Nani Palki, just is Nani Palki, a great man, advocate, argued the case in the Supreme Court, almost all 32 uninterrupted, 30, more third, this were uninterrupted argument, more third, this were, 
ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಇಮಾಜಿನ್ ಮೂವತ್ತೆರಡು ದಿವಸದವರೆಗೆ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ ತಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಏನೇನು ಇರ್ಬೇಕಂತ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಬ್ರೇನ್ ಟು ಆರ್ಗ್ಯೂ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಟೂ ಡೇಸ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಸ್ಲಿ ಅನ್ಇಂಟ್ರಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಮೈ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹವ್ ರೈಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹವ್ ರೈಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಏನೇನು ಓದ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಎಷ್ಟೆಷ್ಟು ಓದ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ದೇವ್ರಿಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತು ಓಕೆ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಅಗೇನ್ ದ ಡಿಸಿಜನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಸಿಜನ್ಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅನ್ ಐದರ್ ಪ್ರೋ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೈದರ್ ಪ್ರೋ ಸಿಟಿಸನ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಓಕೆ ಆವಾಗ ಒಂದು ಪಾಲ್ಕಿವಾಲ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಐ ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ಒನ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಪಾಲ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಪಾಲ್ಕಿವಾಲ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯೂಡ್ ದ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯೂಡ್ ದ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಟಾಟ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಟಾಟ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಾಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಮದಲ್ಕರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸಜ್ಜನ್ ಸಿಂಗ್ ಕೇಸ್ ದೆನ್ ನಂಬ್ಯಾರ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯೂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಗೋಲಕನಾಥ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಫೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯೂಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಪಾಲ್ಕಿವಾಲ ಬಹಳ ಮಂದಿ ಏನ್ ಬೆಳಿತಾರೆ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ತೆಗಿ ತಿಂಗ್ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ನಾನಿ ಪಾಲ್ಕಿವಾಲ್ ಅಂತಾರೆ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ನಾನಿ ಪಾಲ್ಕಿವಾಲ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ಹೌ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲಿ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯೂಡ್ ದ ಕೇಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ and that master has created three servants that master has created three servants one is judiciary one is parliament and one is executive so what in this case in the bharti case the government argued government is supremacy of the parliament the government argued based upon again the austin theory based upon the austin theory what the government argued that so 368 gives a power to amend the constitution by using that power i can amend any any provision of the constitution even i can replace the constitution even i can bring the new constitution this is what the government argued and i don't have any limitations on my power a limitation ellu limitation the illive illa yenu baradhe illa there is no specific provision there is no explicit prohibition in the 368 when there is no explicit prohibition yenu nam mele iti miti baradhe illa and mele namage ella amendment madu adhikara idde ide anta avaru argument martare that is yes logically government was right when there is no explicit prohibition then there you cannot impl- you cannot bring the implied prohibition by of implied explicit illa antandre implied illa antu tarlik barlik barodilla barlik the government is right in their own way but but nane palki wala hartare alli ide hudukbeku ashte prohibition no avaru explicit baradilla alli ide adru hudukbeku hudukbeku ashte hang hudukbeku anta heltana avanu one idea kodtane yen idea kodtana antandre constitution is a master it has created a th- servant ಸರ್ವಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಈ ಸರ್ವಂಟ್ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟಂತ ಅಧಿಕಾರವನ್ನು ಬಳಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟಂತ ಅಧಿಕಾರವನ್ನು ಬಳಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಆ ಅಧಿಕಾರದಿಂದ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ತೆಗೆದ ಇನ್ನೊಬ್ಬ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ತರ್ತಾನೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಕತ್ತಾನೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಪಾರ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಬೈ ಎಂಜಾಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಬೈ ದಟ್ ಪವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರಿಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಯು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಲಾಜಿಕ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ತಂದ ವಯಸ್ಸಾದ ಕೂಡ ಮಗನಿಗೆ ಅಧಿಕಾರ ಕೊಡ್ತಾನೆ ಸೊ ಮಗನಿಗೆ ಅಧಿಕಾರ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಕೂಡಲೇ ಮಗ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಆ ಅಧಿಕಾರ ಬಳಸ್ಕೊಂಡ ನೀ ಅಪ್ಪ ನನ್ನ ಅಪ್ಪ ಅಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಬೇರೆ ಅಪ್ಪನ ತರ್ತಾನೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಅಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಟೂ ಇಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ನೀವು ಇದನ್ನ ನೂರು ಮಂದಿ ಕೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಇದನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಬರುದಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಇದು ಇಂಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಡ್ ಇದನ್ನ ಬರೆದು ಇಡೋ ಅಗತ್ಯನೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಡಸಂಟ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಇಟ್ ಡಸಂಟ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟೆಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಪ
seven to six, seven to six it was. Not a big difference, not a big difference. Seven to six, and seven judges said that the parliament cannot amend the basic structure of the constitution. What is the basic structure? They did not define it. Basic structure of the Hillary Basic structure of the Nidarva Hildik Barala, as a Samay Banda Hildik Barate, Yavag Yavaga as a Prashni Yelta, Wagavaga Supreme Court or Hirbodu. So in Agatha vacuum the litru, at the good email, deep item get true. Okay. So basic structure of the Yen Hillela. Basic structure, it is evolution, it is developed now. It has been most of the things are now settled, which are basic structure, bare bare case, the bare bare parameters, the basic structure in another. Avaga, Supreme Court now neither rejected the Golaknath case, neither approved the Shankri Prasad Sajjan case, and now it is more balanced. So, some important things, some fundamental of the constitution cannot be touched. What are the fundamentals of the constitution? We don't know. It is only time would tell it. It is only related to things. Only when the case comes, the matter would be decided. Our case, the Lena Tara, yes, parliamentary system is a basic structure of the constitution. Democracy is a basic structure of the constitution. Republic of the government of the basic structure of the constitution. And the preamble is a basic structure of the constitution. Then you are all aware what happened after the Keshwan and the Bharti case. After the Keshwan and the Bharti case, you are all aware what happened after the Keshwan and the Bharti case. Three judges. Sikri, after judgment, has retired after. Just a Sikri retired after. So next senior most was three senior most judges. Ali Varge, next senior most was the chief justice was in the appointment model of Padati Bandarate. And that was a broken. That convention was a broken in the Keshwan and the Bharti case. After the delivery of the Keshwan and the Bharti case, the government did not like the judgment. Did not like the judgment. So they sacked the three judgments. Not sacked another, they signed three judges, their sideline. Fourth senior judge was made a chief justice of India. And fourth senior judge was Ian Roy. And who as Ian Roy was given judgment in favor of the government. Three senior most judgment judges were given the judgment against the government. And you know who are those? Seetal, Grover, and Hegde. Hegde was the father of a Santosh Hegde. Imuru Mandi judges were respectable. Our seniority sideline. Fourth senior most was promoted as chief justice. Our resignation court matter heads. So the first big blow was given to the judiciary by showing its fidelity towards the constitution, not the government. So judge was committed to the constitution and they paid the price. That was a big blow. That was a big blow. Okay. So, but anyway, the Keshwan and the Bharti case has shaved the Indian constitution. Judgment shaved the constitution. Okay. So thereafter, mm -hmm. things are settled. Thereafter, things are settled. Alinda Munde and Aitu, basic structure expansion. The basic structure started expanding in each case, in each case. Because thereafter, and after the Menka Gandhi case, the judiciary becomes stronger and stronger. Judiciary becomes vibrant. And the judiciary started asserting authority. And judiciary included so many things. So many things. So we have so now basic so many structure. Independence of a judiciary is a basic structure. Free election is a basic structure. 19 is a basic structure. 21 is a basic structure. 14 is a basic structure. 32 is a basic structure. Secularism is a basic structure. Okay, social justice is a basic structure. So, so many, so many, so many cases are there. So, this is the amendment to the constitution. Now, things are stabilized. Things are stabilized. So, amendment to the constitution cannot test the basic structure. What is a basic structure? It is a question of a fact. Judiciary would decide it after considering the facts of each case. But by going all these things, we can say that the certain things are settled. For example, independent of a judiciary, judicial review is a basic structure, and judicial review was a basic structure was considered in the Rajanarayan case. That is a one more case decided in 1975. In Agatha, Indra Gandhi case, Indra Gandhi Then matter was pending before the Supreme Court. Again, matter 39th Amendment. Congress government bought the 39th amendment. A 39th amendment any dispute in respect of president, vice president, speaker, prime minister. Any election dispute in respect of president, vice president, speaker, and prime minister will be decided by the tribunal constituted by the parliament. Will be decided by the authority constituted by the parliament. So parliament is the authority constituted by the Supreme Court High Court decided by the 38th amendment. Pass Martha, 
So that amendment was challenged. That amendment was challenged. And in that case, uh, the Supreme Court st struck down that separation of power is also basic structure. Akantamre parliament daru, legislator, legislator daru, adjudication madlik barala. Adjudication madlik barala. It is beyond their reach. So separation of power was considered a basic structure. And the judicial review is also considered as a basic structure. So now you, you cannot shut, you cannot keep the Supreme Court and High Court judiciary away from the uh, deciding the any provision of the constitution. So that was considered in the Rajanaran case. So thereafter, Menaka Gandhi case Bharata, thereafter it went to Bomai case Bharata. Bomai case the federal thing, federal constitution was considered as a basic structure of the constitutions. So now things are normalized. So now, so I said amendment to the constitution, three stages from 1950 to 1965, 65 to 73, 73 to onwards now. So now we are on an expanding mood. Judiciary is vibrant judiciary, robust judiciary. And now no parliament. And one more thing, why this amending the constitution has minimized? Because the political scenario is also changed. Political scenario is also changed. So after 19, up to 1985 or 1990 decade, it was a one party which was enjoying the power over the every country, every state, and it was having absolute majority in the Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha also. But there after 1989, after 18, 1989, in when VP Singh government came into the power, then it was a coalition era. It was a coalition era. When it was a coalition era, then it becomes very difficult for the any government to change the constitution because it has to rely on the uh, uh, coalition's partners. And coalition partners are not so easily uh, uh, agreeing to amend the constitutions. So this is another area. So political instability, coalition area has ma made the government weak to go upon the constitutions. This is one more reason why we have more safety provisions. And another thing is that media has become more vibrant. Another important factor is that media has become more vibrant. Public opinion becomes more important. So because of the public opinion, because of the media, even the government is afraid of touching the Keshwana the Bharti case. This is another reason. And one more reason is that the democracy becomes deep rooted in India. Indian voters becomes more matured now. They can make a differentiate between the central government and the state government. They can elect the different parties at the central and the state. So because of all these reasons, because of the political scenario, change in the political scenario, regionalism, the vibrant um, electronic print media, opinion, public opinion, deep rooted democracy. So everyone has made the government not to touch the Keshwananda Bharti case. And this is the thing. And thereafter, one more thing I would like to tell two cases. Waman Rao case, one more case is there. And Koilo versus State of Tamil Nadu. These are the two cases. What happened in this case? Ninth schedule. Ninth schedule. Ninth schedule, you know, any legislation put into ninth schedule, then that cannot be that cannot be that cannot be challenged in Article 14 and 19. That cannot be challenged in Article 14 and 19. And it shut the judicial review. So in the Waman Rao case and the Koilo case, the Supreme Court said that yes, after 1973. The parliament cannot touch the basic structure, basic structure. So now in an Indira Gandhi case, judicial review is held to be basic structure. In Indira Gandhi case, judicial review to be held to be basic structure. So according to these rationality, in Oman Rao case and the Koilo case, the Supreme Court said that now any legislation added to the ninth schedule, any legislation added to the ninth schedule after 1973 can be reviewed on the ground of a basic structure. That was a good welcome. That was a good welcome. Definitely. So now after 1973, so earlier to 1973, basic structure was not applied. So any legislation added to ninth schedule cannot be touched. So anything added to ninth schedule after 1973, yes, it can be questioned if it violates the basic structure. So that was a good welcome on the part of Oman Rao cases. So this is, and you know, ninth schedule is a device is used by the parliament to bypass the judiciary. And the ninth schedule, no, it started with the Land Reforms Act. Now there are so many other legislations to put. Now it is almost all, I think, I think, Last two decades, nothing has been added to nine schedule, I think. Okay. So almost all in nine schedule, we have 284 legislation. 284 legislation in the ninth schedule. And all those 284 legislation are removed from the judicial view. It is attack, direct attack on the democracy. It is direct attack on the democracy, I can say. How can you, how can you deprive the citizens' right to review the judicial view? And you keep those legislation beyond the judicial view, you keep it on nine schedule. Initially it, initially, it was started with the uh, intention to keep only the labor, I mean, sorry, agriculture uh, legislations. But if you look into 284, it doesn't contain only agriculture legislation. It doesn't contain the land selling acts. It contains other legislation. It was abused. It was misused. 
but anyway recently now the parliament has stopped all those things putting into night schedule so this is the amendment of the indian constitution things are stabilized we are good keshwananda bharti has saved us thereafter the political scenarios has changed public opinion has changed then democracy peoples becomes more mature then the print media electronic media all these things have now scared the government to revisit the keshwar and the bharti case so this is all about and one more thing last 368 fourth and the fifth clause 368 fourth and the fifth clause 368 fourth and fifth clause were added to the indian constitution after the keshwar and the bharti case after the keshwar and the bharti case keep in mind it was added so in the keshwar and bharti case this is fourth and fifth what it says that the parliament has a power to amend any provision again specifically explained they wanted to again overcome the keshwar and bharti case so the keshwar and bharti case put limitation they cannot touch the basic structure but again the government amended the constitution they added it fourth and fifth clause this says that the parliament doesn't have any limitation and the parliament has can amend anything anything okay and the fifth clause says that any amendment to the constitution cannot be challenged in the court fifth clause so they put the limitations and government wanted to shut the doors of the court but those two provisions 364 54 and 5 were declared as unconstitutional in a minerva mills case fourth and fifth were declared unconstitutional so minerva mills case uh, declared 368 fourth and fifth clause unconstitutional okay so now any parliament amendment can be questioned in the court of law it is not a conclusion it is not a final okay i think i think this is all about this is all about this is the amendment to the constitution this is all about the amendment to the constitution now i'll come to the second the second provision i think one hour is over i'll come to the second provision emergency power emergency power emergency power this of indian constitution emergency power 352 to 360 explicit provision explicit provision inserted in the indian constitution you cannot find a, this kind of a provision in other constitution in usa you do not find the explicit provisions of the emergency australia you do not find it they have passed the emergency laws keep in mind they have passed the emergency laws okay that is a different thing ordinary legislations are there but they do, you do not find the the articles in the constitution but the indian constitution have mentioned it and you are aware why these things are mentioned in the indian constitution because the constitution make us aware of the history you know the indian peoples are divisive divisible they fight among themselves they fight with each other so if you do not have these provisions then the india would be disintegrated india would be decided it would be divided so to have the maintain the unity diversity of india we need some kind of emergency power we need a strong center strong center so with that intention article 352 360 was added Three six added. Okay, now one more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Three sixty, three fifty two. Three. There are three kinds of emergency. Three kinds of emergency. One is national emergency. Second one is presidency rules, and third one is economic emergency. Emergency. Okay. Now three fifty two. Three fifty two. Article three fifty two. If you look into article three fifty two, it contains the seven provisions. It contains a certain provisions, and one more thing I would like to tell you, I would like to tell you, if you wants to read a 352, you better read 44th Amendment. Without reading the 44th Amendment, you may not understand Article 352. You may not understand the true scope of a Article 352. You cannot understand. You cannot appreciate it. Okay, so you ought to read a 44th Amendment, and you ought to read the 42nd Amendment also. Because those, those are the biggest amendments in the Indian constitution carrier. 42nd and they are called a mini constitution. They are called a mini constitution. And whatever was done by 42 was undone by 44th. Keep in mind. Whatever was done by 42 was undone by 44th. And 44th amendment was carried by the Janta government. And 42nd amendment was carried by the Indira government during the emergency. During the emergency. Try to understand these two things. Okay. Munda, 352, national emergency. 356 state emergency 360 economical emergency economical emergency and as far as three, 352 356 and 360 yes there is no debate there is no discussion that whether you should have or should not have yes everyone agreed yes 
ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋದು ಸಮರ್ಥಿ ಇತ್ತು ಸೊ ಹಿಂಗಾಗಿ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಡಿಬೇಟ್ ಆಗಲಿಲ್ಲ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಡಿಬೇಟ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದು ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಈ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ಮತ್ತು ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಹೇಳೋತ್ನಾಗ ನೀವು ಮೂರು ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಹೆಚ್ಚಾನ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಓದ್ಕೋಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಒನ್ ಒಂದು ಸರ್ಕಾರಿ ಕಮಿಷನ್ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟು ಸರ್ಕಾರಿ ಕಮಿಷನ್ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದಿರುತ್ತೆ ದೆನ್ ದ ವೆಂಕಟಾಚಲಯ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ವೆಂಕಟಾಚಲಯ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ರಿವ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಮ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಪವರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಪೂಂಚ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದಿರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಪವರ್ ಪವರ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೋ ರೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ಡ್ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಅದನ್ನು ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ಯಾರು ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಕ್ಲೇಮ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಕ್ಲೇಮ್ಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಕ್ಲೇಮ್ಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಐ ಯು ಯೂಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಇಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಯಾರು ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈ ಓಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ದಟ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇವ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ರೇವ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ ದಟ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇವ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ರೇವ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಈಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ತ್ರೀ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ವಾರ್ ಅನದರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಅಗ್ರೆಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಆರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ರೆಬಲಿಯನ್ ಆರ್ಮ್ಡ್ ರೆಬಲಿಯನ್ ಸೊ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ದ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ದೆನ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಡೆಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಡೆಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಡೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಡೆಡ್ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸೊ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ಸಬ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ವಾರ್ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೇಕಂತ ಏನಿಲ್ಲ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಅಗ್ರೇಷನ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೇಕಂತ ಏನಿಲ್ಲ ಅದನ್ನ ಅವಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಮೊದಲೇ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಇಫ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಮಿನಿಯಂಟ್ ಥ್ರೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಅಗ್ರೇಷನ್ ಅವರ್ ವಾರ್ ಅವರ್ ಆರ್ಮ್ ರೆಬಿಲಿಯನ್ ದೆನ್ ಹಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ದ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಸೊ ವಾರ್ ನಮ್ಮ ಮೇಲೆ ಯಾರೋ ಅಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಮಾಡಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಂತ ಏನಿಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರ ಮಾಡೋ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ನಿಮಗೆ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಬಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಎಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಥ್ರೆಟ್ ಟು ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವಾರ್ ಸೊ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ವಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಅಗ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆರ್ಮ್ ರೆಬಿಲಿಯನ್ ಇಫ್ ದ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಥ್ರೆಟ್ ಅಂತ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಥ್ರೆಟ್ ಆರ್ ಎನಿ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಥ್ರೆಟ್ ಪೂರ್ತಿ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಅದಂತಲ್ಲ ಯಾವುದೇ ಒಂದು ಸ್ಟೇಟದ್ದು ಆಗಲಿ ಯಾವುದೇ ಒಂದು ಇಂಡಿಯಾದ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿ ಥ್ರೆಟ್ ಇಂದ ಆತಂತಂದ್ರೆ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ದ ಎಮರ್
ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಆಲ್ರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದಿರುತ್ತೆ ಬಟ್ ಮತ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಮತ್ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕ್ಲಿ ಆಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಯಾಕೆ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕ್ಲಿ ಆಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಯು ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವೆದರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅವೇರ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದ ಇಂದಿರಾ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ದ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ವಿದೌಟ್ ದ ಕನ್ಸಲ್ಟೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾಬಿನೆಟ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಯಾರ್ದು ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಬಿನೆಟ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಕನ್ಸಲ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆಲ್ಲ ಇನಿಲಾಟ್ರಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಡಿಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾಳೆ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಎ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ did not make an inquiry whether it was a pass in the council of a minister or to whether other minister agreed or not he simply signed the order simply signed the order a one the krat dinda a onde one the krat dinda nam president ig one nickname sik bidutte rubber stamp ant a onde one the krat dinda our president got the nickname of a rubber stamp ant okay so a paristhiti mat barbar ant heli 3523 is added by the 44th amendment it was added by the 44th amendment ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಕ್ರಮಿ ಇಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ದ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹವ್ ಪಾಸ್ ದ ರೆಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಟನ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಟು ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿಕ್ಲೇರ್ ದ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಓವರಲ್ಲಿ ಆನ್ ದ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸಜೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ರಿಟನ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಶನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಸೊ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಸೇಫ್ಟಿ ಮೆಜರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಡೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ಇನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಟ್ರಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಪ್ರೈಮ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಕಾಲ್ ಹಿ ಶುಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಕಾಲ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಕನ್ಸಲ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅದರ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೇಫ್ಟಿ ಮೇಜರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೇಫ್ಟಿ ಮೇಜರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ದೆನ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಟು ಫೋರ್ ಅದು ಏನು ಹೇಳುತ್ತೆ ಒನ್ ಸಲ ಪ್ರೊಕ್ರಮೇಷನ್ ಅನೌನ್ಸ್ ಆದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಪಾರ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಮುಂದೆ ಇಡಲೇಬೇಕು ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಕಿಂತ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕಿಂತ ಮೊದಲು ಎಷ್ಟು ತಿಂಗಳ ಅವಧಿ ಇತ್ತು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಎರಡು ತಿಂಗಳ ಅವಧಿಯೊಳಗೆ ಇಡಬೇಕಾಗಿತ್ತು ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅದನ್ನ ಎರಡು ತಿಂಗಳ ಅವಧಿ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಒಂದು ತಿಂಗಳ ಅವಧಿಗೆ ರೆಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಸೊ ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ರೆಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಟೂ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಟೂ ಮಂತ್ಸ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಮಂತ್ ನಾವ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ನಾವ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ದ ರೆಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಕ್ಲಮೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಮರ್ಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಲೆಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ಹೌಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿದ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಒನ್ ಅವರ್ ವಿದ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಒನ್ ಮಂತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಪ್ರೂವಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟೇಕನ್ ವಿದ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಮಂತ್ ಒಂದು ತಿಂಗಳೊಳಗೆ ಅಪ್ರೂವಲ್ ತಗೋಬೇಕು ಒಂದ್ ವೇಳೆ ತಿಂಗಳೊಳಗೆ ಅಪ್ರೂವಲ್ ತಗೊಳ್ಳಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ದ ಪ್ರೊಕ್ಲಮೇಷನ್ ಕೀಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಟು ಆಪರೇಟ್ ತನ್ ತಾನೆ ಆಟೋಮೆಟಿಕ್ಲಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ಸಲ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಪುಟ್ ಬೈ ದ ಫೋರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಟೂ ಮಂತ್ಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ರೆಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಮಂತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ನಾವ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ 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 ಬೈ ದ ಬೋತ್ ಹೌಸಸ್ ರಾಜ್ಯಸಭಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಲೋಕಸಭಾ ಇಲ್ಲೇ ಮತ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಆಗಲೇ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಅಮೆಂಡ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅದಾಗ ಹೇಳಿದ್ನಲ್ಲ ಎರಡು ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ಮೆಜಾರಿಟಿ ನಾವ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಮೆಜಾರಿಟಿ ನಾವ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಕ್ಲಮೇಷನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಪ್ರೂವ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಅಬ್ಸೂಟ್ ಮೆಜಾರಿಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಅಬ್ಸೂಟ್ ಮೆಜಾರಿಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಸೊ ಫೈವ್
again the same thing absolute majority to two third majority so again more important more safety is added by the 44th amendment so now the executive doesn't have any lateral power to decide how long the emergency has to be continued there is a check you can decide only up to 6 months before beyond 6 months the parliament would decide it okay so that is important thing is added by the uh, 44th amendment beyond 6 months beyond 6 months and again as usual beyond 6 months again approval if the uh, lok sabha is there take the approval of lok sabha if the lok sabha is not there take the approval of rajya sabha and when the lok sabha is constituted within 30 days same things okay now most important most important 32 to 252 6 252 6 252 6 is that this is what is added absolute majority with a special majority is added earlier it was simple majority 44th amendment is added absolute majority and a special majority this is one more check now just think about it now it is very difficult to get the absolute majority in the both houses after 1990 not a single party has got absolute majority in the both houses so you see the significance impact of those 44th amendment so those era of a single party is over now it is a era of a different political party political scenario so that is why it is very difficult to um, even declare the emergency okay so even the present government doesn't enjoy the power in the rajya sabha doesn't have the power in the rajya sabha majority in the rajya sabha so very difficult very difficult so now this is most important 250 to 3527 it is added by its uh, 44th amendment it is added by 44th amendment which was not there in the earlier constitution what it says what it says once the emergency is declared what it says once the emergency is declared and it has to be laid down in the parliament approval of the parliament within one month once it is approved then continue for 6 months beyond 6 months again come back to the parliament take it but if the parliament thought that the executives are unnecessarily unnecessarily extending the emergency unnecessarily continuing the emergency if the parliamentarian thinks that emergency needs to be revoked the provision was given to them power was given to them so now parliamentarian can revoke the emergency parliamentarian can revoke the emergency if you read the 352 7 7 plus very carefully this power was given to only lok sabha not to rajya sabha this power was given only to lok sabha house of the people they are not used to the parliament it was given to only lok sabha not to the uh, rajya sabha i don't know why it was not why it was derived to the rajya sabha and why it was given to only lok sabha what it says 352 sub clause what it says that if the application given by the members whose strength is more than 1/10th of the lok sabha 1/10th of the lok sabha means 545 1/10 54th if the 55 members mp signs the application and request the president if the um, the house house is not in a session if the house is not in a session makes the applications to the president that we wanted to revoke we wanted to consider the revocation of a emergency so if the application is submitted to the president when the parliament when the lok sabha is not in session if the lok sabha is in the session then it must be given to the speaker if such application is given to either president or speaker then the president must call the lok sabha then it must be decided within a 14 days it must be decided within a 14 days and one more thing is that in this case revocation of emergency can be done with a simple majority revocation of emergency can be done with a simple majority so now the power is given to the legislature also to revoke it so earlier before 44th amendment only executive would have decided to whether to revoke or not to revoke now the power is given to the legis mps also but mps was given to lok sabha not to given rajya sabha i do not understand the logic behind this one because suppose take example the rajya sabha is a permanent body lok sabha is a temporary body lok sabha can be dissolved rajya sabha cannot be dissolved suppose take example when the emergency was declared and if the lok sabha was dissolved then if the lok sabha is dissolved then 352 352 uh, sub clause 7 becomes ineffective then it should have been given to both houses it should have been given to both houses more important but it was given to only lok sabha anyway it was given to lok sabha so these are all about the 352 other clear the procedure of a 352 now what is the effect of emergency devastating effect the first important effect is that the federal principles goes under changes substantial changes happens fundamental changes happens bahala substantial changes agate fundamental changes agate federal principles suspension agate the constitution gets converted into unitary constitution agate unitary constitution provisions will barate even without amending the constitution see the mechanism we have the indian constitution beautiful mechanism so in during the emergency the uh, the constitution gets converted into unitary constitution even without amending the constitution 
So Article 353, Article 353, Article 353, what it says that, what it says that, all the Article 353 have A, B clause, they have A, B clause. What it says that the central government executive, central executive can give a directions to the state executives. So central government gets a control over the state executives. So central government executive can give a direction in what way your power could be exercised, in what way the laws could be implemented, enforced. So it comes am completely under control of the central government because situation needs to be handled with only one authority. If the multiple authority is allowed to handle handle in a different way, then the things gets confused and the things gets worsened. So let us have the situation where only one authority can act decisively. With that purpose, the central government has given leading role, more power during the emergency. So central government or state government uh, directions could be executed executive directions could be 353 prakara. Okay. Now another thing, even the parliament under 353, even the parliament can make a law over the state list. Usually seventh schedule only mood list is union list, concurrent list, state list. So central government can parliament can make a law over the union list and the concurrent list, but they cannot make a law over the state list. But during the emergency, the even the parliament can make a law over the matter listed in the state list. So state list is Arvatnak matter, the Arvatnak matter may parliament go emergency or canon marbo. So once the emergency is lifted, all those laws become ineffective. That is what a 353. Then the 354, 354, 354 the nerate, all the financial relations are terse. Financial relations are tragate. Article 268 to 279 gets altered, gets modified. The state government, central government can levy any tax on any matter. The financial relation get altered, get changed, substantial change in central government gets more power to improve the revenue matter, collect taxes and all those things because they need to handle the situations. So that's the third effect, third effect. First effect, executive. Second effect, legislative relation changed. Third effect, financial relation changed. Final relation change. So 352, 353, 354. Important thing. So 355, don't get connected with here. So next comes 358 and 359. 358. What has happened? 358. 358 says Article 19 would be suspended automatically once the emergency is declared. So 358 says that not notwithstanding anything contained in the constitution. The state government cannot be prevented to make any law which is in which is contrary to the uh, Article 19 or inconsistent with Article 19. So 358 prakara immediately emergency declare madre sarkara kendra sarkara agli rajya sarkara agli uh, Article 19 you know freedom of speech in tala hakku suspend agatha suspend agatha ne operation suspend agatha hakku suspend agala right is not suspended but the operation of a such Article 19 is suspended. Okay, keep in mind. So don't get confused. Right is not suspended. So operation of implementation of a right is suspended. Okay. So anyway, but effect is the same. Anyway, effect is the same. Theoretically, you can say that Article 19 is suspended, not suspended, but the implementation of Article 19 is suspended. Okay. So any state government can make a law against the Article 19. So this is what. And one more amendment is carried to 358. One more amendment is carried to 358. What is the amendment is carried to 358? Article 19 is suspended only when the emergency is declared on the war and external aggression. If the emergency is declared on the armed rebellion, then Article 19 is not suspended. Keep in mind. And that was done by 44th Amendment. That was done by the 44th Amendment. Okay. Now, next, 359. 359. What is the impact of a 359? What is the impact of a 359? 359 says the president can proclaim the notification can issue the order under 359. What is that order the president can issue if there is existence of the any emergency, national emergency? The president can suspend the right to move any court. Suspend what? What he can suspend? He can suspend right to move a court. Right to move any court. Right to move any court. For the enforcement of a fundamental rights in the third chapter. So article 1959, 358, 359, Salpa, 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 carefully read Madhukali. 358, the moment emergency is declared immediately, it empowers the state government to pass any law which may violate, which may breach your article 19. But 359, Daga, 
you cannot make any law immediately after the proclamation of emergency you would require the notification issued by the president under 359 so president has to issue a notification under 359 and what is that notification content of the notification content of the notification is that you are barred you are barred from moving to any court you are barred from moving to any court to enforce the other fundamental rights in the third chapter fundamental rights are not suspended under 359 fundamental rights are not suspended only right to move a court for the enforcement of those rights are suspended so remedy is suspended remedy is suspended okay so solution is suspended but the rights are kept intact and uh, ultimately again impact is the same if the remedy is not there what is use of a right okay so 359 so this is what the 359 and one more added in the 359 in the 44th amendment one more is added one more amendment is carried to 359 under 359 now you cannot suspend article 21 and 22 so article suspension of article 21 and 22 cannot be done under 359 now so during the emergency these two things are kept in intact and this is happened because of the famous case adm jabalpur case and this is happened because all those government all those janta leaders were kept inside the jail because of the emergency so they thought that during the emergency right to life should not be suspended so article 22 and 21 cannot be suspended and that is a very very big impact made by the 44th amendment and one more amendment is a carried in a 358 in a 358 all the laws cannot be suspended related to fundamental right only those laws related to emergency only those laws related to emergency can be effected under 359 if the law is nothing to do with emergency for the enforcement of those laws you can move to the court keep that point in a difference so that is also a contribution made by 44th amendment so earlier once the emergency is declared you cannot move to court for the any law enforcement of a fundamental rights in the third chapter okay so what suppose for example if the emergency is declared what is their right to education and all those things nothing to do with emergency nothing to do why those things should be suspended what is the right to promotion why those things should be suspended article 154 and article i mean sorry at 164 154 or article 156 something to do with employment what those things should be suspended nothing to do with the emergency so that was made a significant division was made in the 359 article so only the laws only rights which are related to emergency can be suspended not every other law so that was a good i mean amendment carried by the janta government in the 359 so this is impact now the question is that so far whether 352 can be challenged in the supreme court illi varge aa tarada yavade case namu undilla illi varge namu president illa 352 ka challenge maadaboda supreme court munde yake antandre judicial review is considered as a basic structure judicial reviews allows you to challenge any provision of the constitution if it is against the third chapter of the constitution now the question is that satisfaction of a president or the word used in a 352 satisfaction of a president is a personal satisfaction objective or subjective objective or subjective nimu gottide gottilla objective andre enu subjective andre enu subjective andre manasina prakara tilidanga madodakke subjective antare objective antandre illa nin manasina prakara alla ella sakshigal nodukonde material nodukonde document nodukonde then you have to take the call then you have to take the judgment then that is called objective so satisfaction of president under 352 ought to be subjective or objective ಇನ್ನು ಇಲ್ಲಿವರೆಗೆ ಏನಾಗಿತ್ತು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿವರೆಗೆ ಆ ತರದ ಮೇಲೆ ಕೇಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಲುಕ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಟೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಟು ಆನ್ಸರ್ ದ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಭೂತನಾಥ್ ಅಂತ ಕೇಸ್ ಇದೆ ಒಂದು ಕೇಸ್ ಹೇಳ್ತೀನಿ ಭೂತನಾಥ್ ಅಂತ ಕೇಸ್ ಇದೆ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ಟೈಟಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕೇಸ್ ವೇಟ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಹಾ ಭೂತನಾಥ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲ್ ಏರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ Bhutanath versus West Bengal year 1974 Supreme Court 806 it was decided 1974 keep in mind it was decided 1974 okay igin siti bere ide agin siti bere ide okay avag supreme court dare helthare so the satisfaction of the president under 352 is a political issue not a legal issue it is subjective beyond the judicial review beyond the judicial review or the subjective adan question madlik barode illa ಅದರ ಸಂಬಂಧ ಪರಿಹಾರ ಇತ್ತು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ವೋಟರ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪೊಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ವೆದರ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಅಬ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಮಿಸ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವೆದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಜೆನ್ಯೂನ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ದ ವೋಟರ್ಸ್ ಶುಡ್ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ ಮ್
ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ಲೀಗಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪೊಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಅಂತ ಅವಾಗ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಓಕೆ ದೆನ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಏಟಿ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಏಟಿ ಇನ್ ಮಿನರ್ವಾ ಮಿಲ್ಸ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮಿನರ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ ಮಿಲ್ಸ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಭಗವತಿ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಭಗವತಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ದ ಒಪಿನಿಯನ್ ನಾವು ನಾವು ಜುಡಿಷಿಯಲ್ ರಿವ್ಯೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಜುಡಿಷಿಯಲ್ ರಿವ್ಯೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ so uh, when the judicial review is the basic structure and yes judicial uh, judicial review uh, judicial has the power to decide to question of the satisfaction of president so it is no more subject it is objective anta express opinion maartane so illi varige namge adr mele yavudu case illa 352 mele clear case illa okay so this is what has happened with the 352 352 now i'll come to very very important case adm jabalpur case historical case 1975 ನಿಮಗೆ you know the maintenance of internal security act 1970 that legislation was there that legislation was a preventive detention legislation a uh, legislation was a preventive detention legislation and section 3 allows the district magistrate section 3 of the misa act allows the district magistrate to issue a detention order two years one year earlier it was one year and later it was amended made it to two years to issue a detention order for two years without the charges if he thinks that person being a anti social element or acting a prejudice to the society now uh, then he can issue order a section 3 ologa shukla anta obba politicians nu detention martare misa act dali and he was kept in the different different jails he was kept in the, some jail in bombay sometimes in karnataka jail sometimes in odisha madhya pradesh dali irtare then at that point of time 359 article dali fundamental rights were suspended so he cannot move 32 is also suspended so he cannot go to the supreme court so then he used the article 226 because article 226 can be used for the enforcement of fundamental rights or other legal rights also so he filed uh, writ petitions habeas corpus writ petitions filed martana 9 high court dali he filed writ petitions nine high courts dali he writ petitions filed martana and nine high courts nine high courts held all the nine high courts held even though even the right to move a court is suspended for the fundamental rights third chapter okay but yet it can be habeas corpus can be issued under article 226 if if the executive have not complied with the law not complied with the law keep in mind here i know shukla yen kelta idane section 3 prakara misa act prakara magistrate antra kelond evidence irbeku ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಡಾಕ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ಇರಬೇಕು ಓಕೆ ಅವಂಗ ಮನವರಿಕೆ ಆಗಿರಬೇಕು ಏನು ಮನವರಿಕೆ ಆಗಿರ್ಬೇಕು ಈ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಸಮಾಜದ ವಿರುದ್ಧ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಅವಂಗ ಮನವರಿಕೆ ಆಗಿರಬೇಕು ಸೊ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಮ್ಯಾಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಂಟಿ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಸೊ ಟು ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಹೀ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಮ್ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಹೀ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಹೀ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಮ್ ಎವಿಡೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಸೊ ದ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಹೀ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಇಫ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಕ್ವಶನ್ it can be questioned because non compliance of a law okay so agini 9th high court davaru judgment kodtara yen judgment kodtara yes writ of abs corpus would lie even though in the notification issued by the president under article 359 if the law is not complied he is not seeking his release on the basis of fundamental rights he is seeking his release that law is not honored law is not complied so that was the argument and that was the argument was upheld by the nine high courts ಒಂಬತ್ತು ಐ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ದೆನ್ ದ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ನೈನ್ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ನೈನ್ ಜಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ನೈನ್ ಐ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಜಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ವೆಂಟ್ ಟು ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ವೆಂಟ್ ಟು ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಎ ಡಿ ಎಂ ಜಬಲ್ಪುರ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಎಬಿಎಸ್ ಕಾರ್ಪಸ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಎಬಿಎಸ್ ಕಾರ್ಪಸ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಕೇಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಫೈವ್ ಜಜಸ್ ಕೇಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಫೈವ್ ಜಜಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಟೈಮ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಬಾರ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಿ ಚೀಫ್ ಜಸ್ಟಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಟು ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ದ ಬೆಂಚ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಜಜಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಥಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಜಜಸ್ ವುಡ್ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ದ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಆನೆಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ they thought that senior most cases judges case would decide the cases very impartially with integrity so not to allow the junior judges let us decide the cases so that case was decided the first five senior most judges 
first five senior most judges. And you know the, who are those the five judges? One is Jayan Roy, Beg, Chandrachur, Bhagavati, and fifth man is Achar Kanna. Five judges heard the matter, heard the matter. So the case came before them. And the government argued, government argued. So 359, audience is issued. Right to move a court is suspended for the enforcement of fundamental rights. So they cannot, they cannot move any court. They cannot move any court. So there is no remedies against the action of executives. The petitioner argues, petitioner argues, I am not seeking my the release of release on the basis of fundamental rights. I am seeking, I am only requesting the government to comply the MISA Act itself. So rule of law is not suspended. Rule of law is not suspended. Government during the emergency has to run in accordance with the law. The government has to carry its function in accordance with the law. It cannot bypass the other laws. So MISA Act, you are using it. So under MISA Act Section 3, you must have a satisfaction. So DJ has to be satisfied. If he has considered a document which are irrelevant, and if he has issued the order without document at all, or if he has issued the order with a malafide, irrelevant ground, ulterior motive, can't you question that order? That was the issue, and the Supreme uh, High Court, nine High Courts have affirmed it, uh, uh, affirmatively. Yes, yes, it can be. But shockingly, 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 in ADM Jabalpur case, judgment was shocking. Judgment was a four is to one. And four judges said that no executive actions can be challenged during the emergency. No executive action. No executive action. So that judgment they give a free hand to the executive to do whatever he wants to do. So the common man on the road, on the street, left at the mercy of the executive. Supreme Court was considered as an apex body. Supreme Court was considered as a guardian of the fundamental rights. Supreme Court was considered as a guardian of the constitution. Judges were given so much protection. Judges were given so much um, precautionary measures. They must have, they must have rescued the common man during the, those crises, but those persons left them on the road at the mercy of the executive. It was one of the worst case ever decided by the Indian judiciary. Self-wounded cases, Antiyunadamit. Self-wounded cases, Antiyunadamit. And a lot of persons have criticized the ADM Jabalpur case. And you, one more thing I would like to tell you, all those five judges were in the line of a becoming a Chief Justice of India. All those five judges, and we'll keep apart the TN Roy, remaining four judges were in the line of a becoming the Chief Justice of India post. And they had a history of a case on the Bharti case. Three senior judges who were given judgment against the government were sidelined. So no senior judge wants to lose the Chief Justice of India post. So that is why judgment went in favor of the government. And only one judge stood to the situation, arose to the situation, and he is none other than HR Kanna. And HR Kanna was a considered one of the courageous judges ever produced in the history of Indian judiciary. Because in the crisis, when the judiciary batted, when the people needed badly the protection of a judiciary, he came forward to protect the common man. He said, yes, during the emergency, during the suspension of fundamental right, rule of law is not suspended. Writ of habeas corpus can be issued if the action of the executive is a malafide, extraneous, based on extraneous ground, or without any ground, without any records. And ultimately, that HR Kanna paid the price for giving a impartial judgment and he lost the Chief Justice of India post. That was the fallback of the ADM Jabalpur case. Okay, I think this is all about a 352. This is all about a 352. Now I'll go up to 356, one more important uh, topic of emergency, 356, very controversial. 356 very become very controversial when the Dr. Ambedkar, when drafting this constitution, he said that the whole constitution assembly was divided over 356. A lot of persons says that 356 should not be there. Some persons say that 356 should be there. So there was a total confusion whether to have a 356 or not 356, because 356 is nothing but hanging a sword on the head of a chief minister. It is nothing but hanging a sword on the head of a chief minister. The chief minister doesn't know when it falls on his head. Okay, so that is why the federal principles should be badly disturbed. So it is an attack on the federal principle. Let us delete it. But ultimately, consensus was reached. So let us have 356 because 
the importance of 356 you can understand if 356 is not there what would have happened to punjab what would have happened to jammu and kashmir what would have happened to northern eastern states you can understand the importance of a 356 yes 356 is required definitely it is needed to keep the state government under the check to keep the government others to see that government should not act anti uh, india so yes 356 required genuinely it has been used in so many cases but at the end the ambedkar said ambedkar said dr ambedkar said i think he said after drafting after resolution is passed and to retain 356 he said that i hope that 356 would be dead letter in the indian constitution he made a statement in the assembly he said that 356 would be a dead letter but if you look now into history after 70 years of experience 356 was the most active article used in the Indian constitution, more than article 21 is used. Article 356 is used. Almost all 120 to 130 times article 356 has been used successfully by different all the all the parties. All the parties. No party, you can you can't spare any party, every party. When they in opposition party, they they talk in a different tune. When they come to power, they talk in a different tune. Okay, they change their uh, the tongue, they change their words. Okay, so 356. But misuse, abuse, 356 is grossly misused, grossly abused. And that's why 356 has been heavily criticized by the uh, committee reports, three committee reports already, Sarkari committee report, so just the Spoonch committee report, and Venkatachala committee report. They says that 356 should be used in rare occasions. It be used as a last weapon. It will be used in a very, very, very serious situation, but it is used in a most in a common situation, ordinary situations. Okay, anyway. What the 356 says, what 356 says, 356, what the 356, the words used in a 356, and 356 should be read with the 355. 355, the duty imposed on the central government to protect the state. So there is a duty on the central government to protect the state from the external aggression, from the external aggression, or from the war, or from the internal disturbance. So if there is any internal disturbance in the state, the central government must assist the state government to carry its function in accordance with the constitution. So if the state government cannot be carried in, uh, in accordance with the constitution, then only the central government must intervene. Central government must intervene. So 356, what it's the word is used. So if the president on the receipt of the report of, from the governor, so 356 important, the president must have the report from the governor or otherwise another word is used, or otherwise so use that first article very important so when the president receives, receives the report from the governor or otherwise even the president doesn't have the report of the uh, governor still he can declare the state emergency he did not have essentially he did not have a the governor reports so without a governor report he can but definitely that order would be weak order if the governor doesn't send the report and he is a considered to be constitution head. He is the main link between the central government and the state government. If that fellow doesn't send the report, and in the absence of the governor, if the state government, central government acts on the other uh, unanimous reports, then definitely that order can be challenged in the court of law. That is a different thing. That is a different thing. Okay. So now next thing, if the government, if the satisfied president is satisfied, again the word satisfied is used in the 356. The word satisfied used in the 352. So the word satisfied used in the 356 has undergone a substantial changes, undergone a substantial changes. Now it is no more personal satisfaction of president. Okay, so president can issue a proclamation. When it can be issue a proclamation? When the state government cannot be carried in accordance with the constitution. When there is a failure of a constitutional machinery. The word failure of a constitutional machinery is not defined in the 352, not defined. And it is not a possible also to define it. How the, uh, the constitution machinery is a fair? How the government cannot be run in accordance with the constitution? It can happen in a number of ways. It can happen in a multiple ways. It cannot be listed. It cannot be listed, it cannot be numbered. Only situation would tell, only circumstances would tell. So that is why it has been kept as it is. It has been kept as it is. When there's a failure of constitutional machinery, then the president can issue a proclamation. Once the president issues the proclamation, then the three things happens, three things happens then all the power, all the power of the executive can be assumed by the president himself. Or he can delegate this power to someone else. Second thing, what happened? The parliament empowers to make the law on the state matters. That is second effect. And the third effect is that the president can make some other incidental order to suspend any article of the constitution related to any institutions 
or any authority concerned with that state, except the High Court. High Court's article cannot be suspended. So these are the three followers of a Article 352. Then next, that precedent rules can be altered, modified, can be revoked back. And next, three is important. Three is important. 350, 356, three is important. Then once the precedent proclamation is made, then it should be led before the parliament. Houses, both houses, approval should be taken within a two months. If the approval is not taken within a two months, then that proclamation key is to operate. Key is to operate. Then there's one defense defects in the 352. What it th says 352.3, approval has to be taken. Okay, within a two months. Then within a two months, if the parliament is um, Lok Sabha is dissolved, then within a uh, first first 30 days from first sitting, then you should have taken from the council of a minister. That is the same usual things. And what it says that approval has to be taken. If the approval is not taken, what happens? What 352 says approval ought to be taken. Approval ought to be taken. If the approval is not taken, then the proclamation key is to effect. It means that suppose take example. The president has dissolved the assembly, dissolved the assembly, then the um, president order is issued. Now the, the matter has come before the parliament and the parliament did not approve it. So president order is over. So now the question, what would happen to that status of the assembly? Whether assembly would revive back? Whether assembly would be restored back? Already assembly is dissolved. Already everything is dissolved. A lot of things have happened within two months. So what is what would be the status? So there is a lacuna, there is a lacuna in the 352.3, 356.3. It should have been stated, it should have been stated, it should have been stated that if it is not approved by the parliament, then the, the assembly would be restored back. Something should have been stated in 356. Nothing has been stated in 356. So that was a rectified in the Bombay case. That was a rectified in the Bombay case. What said in the Bombay case, they said that, the president should not dissolve the assembly. He can keep the suspension of assembly. The president only keep the suspension of a assembly. If it is approved by the assembly, if it is approved by the parliament, then it can be dissolved. If it is not approved by the parliament, then the suspension of assembly goes away. Then the assembly continues. That was a significant, that was a, this significant lacuna rectified by the Bombay case in a Bombay, by the judiciary in a Bombay case. Okay, so that is a 352, uh, three. Then, then again, one more thing, 352, four, 352, four, what it says that it is added by 44th amendment. Earlier, once it is a president's rules is declared, then it can be continued indefinitely. Now, president rule only for six months, valid for six months. After six months, again, come back to the parliament, take the fresh approval, again, come back. So again, the, 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 the power of the executive is a titan. The power of the executive is now checked. Okay, again, you come back to the parliament, seek the extension. If it is approved, then it will be extended further. Then 353, uh, <clears throat> four. Then, then one more thing, maximum period, maximum period of, of 44th amendment puts three years. Beyond three years, you cannot continue that presidency rules. Beyond a six, I mean, beyond three years, you cannot, you cannot. So every six months, you take the approval of the parliament. After one year, one more thing is added. One more thing is added by 44th amendment. After one year, if he wants to extend the presidency rule, there are two conditions must exist. Two conditions must exist. One, there must be existence of the emergency. If there is emergency, national emergency is existed, then only you can continue the presidency rules beyond one year. Otherwise, no. Second condition, where there is a national emergency is existed. Second thing is that you must take the approval of the election commission. The election commission must give approval that it is very difficult to conduct the election because of the national emergency, because of the security of India is a threat. If that opinion is rendered, then only the emergency can be rendered beyond us one year. So further additional safeguards, 44th amendment. Okay, so these are the provisions of a 356. Now I'll tell you about the judicial response to 356. It can be classified into three categories, one up to 1977, up to 1977, then from 1970 to 1994, this one, Bombay case, and after 1994, third stage, three stages, up to 1977, 1977. So 1977, one of the case when Janata Party came into the power in 1977, Charan Singh was a home minister. He issued a notice to the nine assembly chief minister saying that 
and you know in 1977 election janata government came into the power central government and at the state level it was a congress government was ruling and he wrote a letter home minister wrote a letter to chief minister saying that you have lost the mandate of the people so you don't have a constitutional mandate to run the government so you should advise the governor to dissolve the assembly so he, home minister wrote a letter to chief ministers so those chief minister took this letter to the supreme court saying that chief so home minister cannot write this kind of a letter they cannot sack the government so they cannot dismiss the government under the 356 so the supreme court in uh, state of rajasthan versus union of india the supreme court held that the satisfaction of a president under 356 is a subjective is a subjective but it can be questioned see is a very very inconsistent judgment subjective antara mat questionable antara subjective the questionable illi barutte subjective the question barala okay so it is a contradictory judgment confusing judgment okay so what the supreme court says yes president satisfaction is a subjective it is not objective but only thing he must have some document he must have some document but supreme court cannot go into the content of a documents mat confusing president kade document irbekanta ಅದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಡಾಕ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ಇರಬೇಕು ಅದ್ರೊಳಗೆ ಡಾಕ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ಏನು ವ್ಯಾಲಿಡಿಟಿ ಇದಾವೋ ಇನ್ ವ್ಯಾಲಿಡಿಟಿ ಇದಾವೋ ರಿಲೆವೆಂಟ್ ಇದಾವೋ ಇರ್ರಿಲೆವೆಂಟ್ ಇದಾ ಅದನ್ನು ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ಲಾಜಿಕ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಜಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಅಸರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಎಸ್ ದ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾ ಇಫ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಮಾಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಐಡ್ಲಿ ಆನ್ ಇರ್ರಿಲೆವೆಂಟ್ ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ರಾಜಸ್ಥಾನ್ ಜಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ದ ರಾಜಸ್ಥಾನ್ ಜಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ರೈಟ್ it is a welcome decision because 356 is almost all used a political tool almost all used a political tool the congress or any government at the central government if the state government is an opposition party always they use a 356 they would they would see it so almost all all the report says that out of 130 times the 356 used hardly 20 to 25 times it was used in genuinely rest of the times it was used for political purpose political motive political consideration irrelevant consideration to install their own party to uh, sack the opposition party political motive political considerations and uh, usually 356 was not much in a co- controversy till st- 1961 because in 1961 it was almost all the congress ruled everywhere so 356 becomes a controversial when one party is at center and another party is at state if the one party is a uh, um, same party is at center and the state 356 never becomes a issue never becomes issue it becomes issue only when different parties are there at the state and the center okay so it was a political mission it did not use, misuse of too much in up to 1967 but 1967 onwards the political scenario changed the congress government started losing its grip different political parties started coming into the power so 1967 to 1992 94 up to bombay case it was heavily misused abused and the best two examples are when janata government came into the power in 1977 wholesale sacking the government wholesale sacking the government seven seven i mean nine state governments are sacked by janata government by janata government only thing is that because the people have elected different party at the center and state governments have lost its mandate that is the one reason and that was approved by the uh, in supreme court case when indira gandhi returned back in 1980 indira gandhi returned back in 1980 she used the same thing when she, she came back to the power at that point of a time janata governments were ruling in the state and again the nine state governments were sacked wholesale sacking wholesale sacking 356 was used wholesale market okay so those two incidents are grossly abuse of a political purpose political consideration nothing else nothing else so thereafter so many times so many governments were sacked and all those things and you were aware and you were aware in the important milestone came in the in the case of a bombay case historical case turning point turning point in the in judiciary in the history of a political scenario as far as the 356 so till this point of a time we had the three two safety provisions in a 356 when it was 356 was adopted the ambedkar assured that it cannot be misused because of the two reasons he said one reason is that proclamation would be issued by the president and the president being the highest authority he would consider all the matters he would take the call only after due consideration so the, you you should trust your president because the president is your own president so there is one safety second safety is that once the president declares the emergency then it has to be approved by the parliamentarian so your mp would be deciding your mp would be deciding the validity of the proclamation 
So if they think that the president is not acted in a fair manner, they reject it. So there are two provisions are there, two safety provisions are there. So these two safety provisions would prevent the abuse and the misuse. I think Ambedkar was wrong. Ambedkar was wrong. Because the manner in which this wholesale sacking was happening, how many times 356 were used, and these two safety provisions, as long as the member of a parliament affiliation towards a leader, if their commitment is towards the leader, not towards the constitution, no safety provisions can work out. And it has proved that how these two safety provisions were become so uh, illusionary, so redundant, so ineffective, as long as MPs are having a commitment to their political readers rather than the constitution, nothing could work out. But anyway, for my case become handy. So for my case says that under article 356 satisfaction is objective satisfaction. It can be questioned in the court of law. It is no more political issue. It is a legal issue. Very bold statement, very significant change happened and says that now any 356 sacking of the government can be challenged. And they laid down certain rules. They laid down certain rules. 356 used as a last weapon in only ex exceptional cases. When there's a deadlock is created, no other solution is a possible, then only 356 is used. If there's other solution is a possible to save the government, to save the constitutional elected government, you should, the central government should assist them. And second, law and order problem cannot be ground for a invoking a 356. Corruption of a minister cannot be ground for a invoking a 356. Okay, and whether the chief minister has the majority or no majority cannot be tested in the president's and in the governor house. And the MLS cannot be made a paraded in the governor's house or in the governor's office. Whether the chief minister has a majority or no majority, the place to decide is assembly. And whether the chief minister has lost a majority or not lost a majority cannot be decided by the governor. It has to be decided by the assembly and the governor, chief minister must have the opportunity. Without providing this opportunity, invoking a 356 is a bad. And the another thing is that the government, the central government should seek the approval of the um, chief minister whenever the governor is appointed. Okay, 356, but, but only bad drawback of a 356 uh, judgment, Bomai case. 89 Dalai Bomai case was sacked, the government was sacked, judgment was given in 1994. Aid judgment Supreme Court the Hatara, Illa government and restore Marbodanta. Allah, Aido Shadmel, Matil restore Matra, Strong, Indon the government, Pirudum Gudhugirta, restore Maritan, Yen other than Yen Uzagate. So judgment, immediately everything will portray that judgment becomes effective. Otherwise, that judgment has no value. And that's what happened in a uh, Bomai case. This says that sacking the Bomai government was unconstitutional, but it cannot be restored because by that time the, the time was over. So this was a significant judgment. So now the third safety measure is added. Judicial review. Judicial review is added. Judicial review is added. So one, presidency safety. Second, parliamentary. Third, judicial review was added. Then thereafter, important case comes. Kalyan Singh government case. 1999 case. 1919 case. Kalyan Singh was sacked by Ramesh Bhandari, governor. Member withdrawal martara. Kalan Singh member I wanted to prove my majority in the House of Assembly, but that was not a given. And uh, the <clears throat> Kalan Singh was sacked. Jagannath Pal was appointed as a Chief Minister of UP. Immediately next day, the, um, the Kalan Singh went to Allahabad High Court. Allahabad High Court restored the Kalan Singh government. Allahabad High Court, Daru, as the President rule cancel Martha, on a continue Kalan Singh continue Martha. And Jagannath Pal against the order of Allahabad High Court went to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court appeal Martha. Appeal Daga. Supreme Court either they should have approved the order of the Alabad High Court, they should have reversed the Alabad High Court. But occasionally in her Tarandra, Illa composite floor test Madian Tatar, composite floor state and Tandre, Ibrali Arab Obrina Ika Marcurian Tatar, Emma Lagrega. Andre, as a Ratha, there are two chief ministers for Uttar Pradesh. So composite floor test. So MLA can choose either one of the chief ministers, either General Dimbra Kapal or Kalyan Singh. That was unknown. It is unprecedented, unprecedented. Indian constitution recognizes only one chief minister. Indian constitution never recognizes two chief ministers. But this has happened in this case for the Kalyan Singh government, composite flow test, and it was allowed. And ultimately Kalyan Singh won, Jagannath Dimbra Kapal lost, and Kalyan Singh was continued. So that judgment was not a right judgment on the part of the Supreme Court. 
then i'll i'll discuss only two more cases one more case 2005 it was in respect of ramesh takur prasad case bihar 2004 dali election agutte amala lalu prasad yadav and now the who is the chief minister of us nitish kumar they contested opposite none of the party got the majority none of the party got the majority then deadlock was created then each party is not supporting others so the assembly was kept under suspension so almost for one year lost one year lost no party came into the so near close to majority and all those things then again after one year there was some discussion was going on negotiation was going on ultimately nitish kumar was close to have the formation with the another ram vilas paswan he was close he was about to form the government at that time the lu prasad at the central government he thought that thought that thought that now the government would come forward opposite party government would come forward so then all of a sudden the buta singh was a governor of that uh, bihar he sent a report, he sent a report to the president council and central government saying that horse trading is happening lot of things are happening so it would be anti democracy it would be illegal government so the president rule should be declared and the assembly should be dissolved and you know the report was sent to central government at a 9:30 night 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 9:30 and the cabinet meeting was held at 11:30 pm night 11:30 within 2 hours the meeting was called and 11:30 the matter was dissolved to dissolve the assembly at that point of a time the president was in moscow the president was in moscow the father of indian missile okay and at 2:30 midnight the order was passed and the president rule was imposed see the speed the way the things are happened 9:30 report 11:30 cabinet meeting matter was sent to the president and the president signed that order at a midnight at 2:30 and the emergency was declared so this was a question this was a question in the court of law in the court of law and again as usual the order was struck down as unconstitutional but the tragedy of that that order was struck down by the judiciary after 3 year 3 years by that time another election was conducted by that time nitish kumar got the majority in that election and he thought that he has already forgotten the uh, judgment also so what is the use of this judgment if you deliver it after 3 years but anyway anyway it is significant that now judiciary is more careful watchful that your action under 356 can be scrutinized it would be criminal so now what happened because of this uh, bombay case and this uh, ramesh prasad takur case and kalyan singh government case even the central government becomes a more careful while exercising the power under 356 but they are now aware our actions can be challenged in the judiciary corridor so we have to satisfy the judiciary so if the judiciary doesn't approve then it is a setback to us so this is one more one more one more safety measure so now even because of this judgment the president becomes alert also because ultimately president has to sign it so now the president is becoming more careful now they are taking independent advices they are not openly like seeking the advice from the council of minister they are consulting their own legal luminaries they are taking independent advices so they are thinking thinking about twice before signing the order and sometimes in some circumstances they are sent back to the uh, council of minister for reconsideration this is another reasons why 356 is minimized abuse and another reasons after 1992 the political scenario has changed now it is a era of a coalition regional parties regional parties are dead against the 356 they never allowed to use the 356 so now it is becoming a very the national parties like a congress and bjp becomes very difficult very hard for them to use the 356 because they have to depends upon the regional parties and again as usual the democracy becomes more mature voters becomes more mature the public become, opinion becomes a more stronger print media electronic media becomes more stronger so because of these reasons in the last two decades the abuse and the misuse of a 356 to some extent not to some extent a larger extent larger extent has been minimized but it has not been eradicated eradicated to zero level why it is not eradicated to zero level as long as your president as long as governor doesn't act in impartial manner who does not who act in impartial partial manner who does not act integrated manner the abuse of a 356 cannot be eradicated so governor has to act very united i mean integrated impartially 
with the maturity, with the integrity, he must act independently. And uh, one more thing, as long as the governor is appointed from the political parties, the misuse of visa for 356 is a difficult. And as long as the governor acts during the pleasure, absolute pleasure of a president, it is very difficult to prevent the abuse of a 356 because always he wants to keep the president happy. The moment he loses the pleasure of a president, he loses his job. That is why the president doesn't have, see, he is the constitutional, he doesn't have a security also, like a clerk in the government. The government in the clerk has some security, but the governor doesn't have a security. He can be sacked at any moment without assigning the reasons. And another thing, my, one more thing, even after the uh, case, I mean, even after the this case, um, Bombay case, still the things are complicated. Speaker, whenever the invoking of a 356 a resolution change of a parties, then the anti-defection law comes into the picture. And what is happening in now Rajasthan? What is happening in Madhya Pradesh? So speaker plays a very crucial role. He decides the um, um, status of MPs, MLS, who should the parties. He may some of the MP MLS may declare as a uh, anti-defection some he may not so as long as the speaker doesn't act in impartial manner so abuse and misuse of a three i think i think uh, two hours are over i think um, yeah, economical emergency you can read yourself nothing much important so far it has been not implemented not enforced okay so this is what i think it's what i my opinion as far as 356 is concerned yes 356 large extent abuse and misuse has come down because of a judicial intervention, so because of public opinion, because of the change of political scenario, because of maturity of presidents, electronic media, print media, and all those things, definitely, definitely, the scope of a 352 has changed. With these words, yes, 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 yes. I come to conclusions, I come to yes. end of my yes. And yes. one more thing, one more thing, I, re I request yes. you, uh, Actually, I am the professor of a jurisprudence. I'm the professor of a jurisprudence. And I never taught the constitution in my last 20 years history. It is only out of a curiosity. It is only out of an interesting, I read the constitutional provisions. So I know some portion of the constitutions. I may not be knowing all the provisions of the constitution, honestly accepting. So if you want to ask me a question, Ask me a question related to 352, 356, and 352, 356, and amendment to the Constitution. Yes. If you ask your questions to me, which uh, area, which are unknown to me, it becomes a difficult for me to answer it, and I'm not the authority to, to answer those questions. So these are the things which are related to my interesting. I studied it on my own, and I read the articles, I read the books, and uh, this is all some cases made me, and interesting cases of the Keshwan and the Bharti case. And the case on the Bharti case, 810 pages judgment, 810 pages judgment, 11 judgments, 810 pages. I think that judgment is worth to be kept in the showcase. It is worth to be kept in the showcase. I don't know why the judges write so lengthy judgments. God knows the reasons I don't know. I think deliberately they write the judgments to uh, see that our judgment should not be read by others. Which is no one reads, we are sure. And um, <laughs> I thought I thought that eight and ten judgment a very lengthy judgment. Recently another judgment comes. Recently another judgment came. I think that is a uh, Shabri Mala case. Shabri Mala case. That is that is eight hundred fifty to eight hundred sixty pages judgment. My God, who knows? Who reads? Who reads? I don't know. And one more thing. One more thing I tell you. If you read the House of Lords judgment, hardly 10 pages, 15 pages judgments. Majority judgment, minority judgment, worse. Simple language. Anybody can understand. Anybody, anybody can read it within a half an hour, one hour. Everybody can understand. 850 pages, 860 pages, 11 judgments, 11 judgments. Okay. Decision is the same. Reasons are different. Decision is the same. Reasons are different. Only God can understand those reasons on those reasons minority difference i don't know i don't know there's one tendency in india the persons who carries the good bulky books he's an intelligent student the students who carry the small book these are dull students so that is a tendency i think among the judiciary writes a lengthy judgment yes he's intelligent write a short judgment he's not a worthy judge so this is the mentality i think that has made them i do not and one more thing i can uh, conclude 
let the judges write the judgment by their own handwriting. 